Picture this, it's August 1975, a warm summer day in North Webster, Indiana. 17-year-old Laurel Jean Mitchell, full of life and promise, disappears without a trace. The small town is thrown into a state of turmoil, the Mitchell family is left in a state of despair, and the local law enforcement is baffled. The following morning, the grim discovery of Laurel's body in the Elkhart River deepens the mystery. Initially, it's deemed a tragic drowning, an unfortunate end to a young life. But this isn't your typical small-town tragedy. The autopsy report tells a different tale, one of a fierce struggle, but death was due to drowning. Miss Mitchell was reportedly a competent swimmer. Fast forward to 2023, almost 50 years later. The cold case of Laurel Jean Mitchell once gathering dust is reopened with a startling revelation. In a surprising turn of events, modern science breathed new life into an ancient mystery. Thanks to advancements in DNA testing and genetic genealogy, a breakthrough emerged from the shadows. A DNA sample preserved from Mitchell's clothing was found to match with one Fred Bandy, Jr. This unexpected match, coupled with a decade-old tip, swung the doors of the case wide open. The tip, received almost 10 years prior, contained an admission from a man named John Wayne Lehman. Lehman confessed to committing a crime with Bandy back in 1975. The same year Laurel Jean Mitchell had tragically lost her life. With the DNA evidence aligning with the tip, the authorities moved swiftly. The two men, now in their late 60s, were arrested and charged with one count of murder. After nearly half a century, justice finally seemed within reach. But how did we get here? The answers lay in the tireless efforts of Indiana State Police, the power of science, and the invaluable tips from concerned citizens. The probable cause document in the case alleges that Bandy and Lehman admitted their involvement in conversations with others who were high school-aged teens at the time. At least three former students gave such statements to police between June 2013 and September 2019. One local witness said around 10 p.m. that night, she heard a loud car turn around next door. She said she heard voices say, let's get, or let's get her. Another local told investigators he also heard a loud vehicle in the neighborhood, possibly an Oldsmobile Cutlass. Bandy had a 1971 Oldsmobile at the time. It wasn't until 2013 that a woman came forward and said that Lehman, after a date and a party when she was 16 in 1975, admitted to her that he and his friend Bandy committed a crime. Lehman's confession corroborated the DNA evidence, anchoring the case in a solid foundation of truth. After more than 47 years, the pair found themselves charged with one count of murder, held without bond. The wheels of justice finally in motion. As we remember Laurel Jean Mitchell, we are reminded of the relentless pursuit of justice. If this story moved you, we urge you to like and share it. Your voice could be the catalyst in solving the next cold case.